here. I know what you're thinking. Where's Coach Bob? Got a story to tell you. He's got a heartfelt story to tell you. Not a heart failure story, but a heartfelt story. And no, he's not gonna tell you a fib. He's gonna tell you about a fib. So get a cup of coffee for a hearty conversation. Well, hello friends, Coach Bob with you today. And today, no, it's not clickbait. I am having a procedure done. Tomorrow morning is the procedures. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Um, it's a little disconcerting, you know. You've heard me say often that if uh, I know that the days of my life are numbered like the hairs on my head, then I have to trust the one who numbers them until tomorrow. Remember, just because you have an IV and each arm and you're dealing with whatever, you can always enjoy a little motorcycle racing. A little world superbike, that's a great place to start. All right, so today is D-Day. Um, getting ready to do this in the next hour or two, so good morning. All right, well, I am out on Casper the Friendly Spider, man. It's been a week since uh, all of that. Um, man, so much has gone on. It's just been nuts. Uh, I never expected anything like this to happen. Well, I say that. I, you know, I've been having little issues, as I've mentioned in other other videos, a little foreshadowing. <laughs> But this has been this has been quite the experience, you know. I was in the hospital for four and a half, five days, um, and it got pretty serious. I, I'll be honest with you. I would stand up. I mean, just standing up, my heart rate would go up to 180. It was nuts. <laughs> but you know, there's been a lot of scary words thrown around as far as you know, uh, damage to my heart and and uh, that sort of stuff. So. You know, I'm not going to get into all that because there's so many results that are kind of out there in the air. One doctor says this, another says that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to live my life uh, and figure this out one step at a time. Um, worrying about it does nothing. But I wanted to share with you a few things about this, uh, you know, that I think that there's always a benefit uh, for everything. And, and this is no different. Um, so I'm going to share with you some things uh, that I saw this week that uh, will encourage you. And I also want to encourage you to do some things. And that will be coming at the end of this video. And, and we'll talk about all that. But before we get going, if you would do me a favor, give the video a big old fat thumbs up. Wave to your neighbor. And know that life is good. Because it is. All right. Let's see if I can get by this truck here. Give him the wave too. I appreciate him giving me an opportunity to get in front of him. Fix this camera here. All right, we're good. A uh, little shakes and stuff, just normal for the, for this road. So let me talk about some of the scary and encouraging things that I experienced this week. Because for those of us uh, who are, we'll say a little longer in the tooth, you know, we experience these kind of things. <laughs> So for you younger dudes, you know, this is what you need to shoot for because I'm going to tell you that, you know, there's a lot of times you look at your life and you you kind of try to quantify what you've done in your life and, and whether you're a success or a failure or this or that. And this has been a week of a lot of success in, in my life and, and it's come to fruition. So I'm going to talk about it. The first thing I'm going to say is this, love your family, you know, take care of your family. Now, you don't do it because you want something. You do it because you love your family. But do it with great sincerity and the rewards will be, you know, just <laughs> unbelievable. Last week, I went into AFib and it, wouldn't, it just wouldn't let go, you know. And so I end up in the hospital. I tell Vic, of course, you know, that loose lips sink ships and not to tell anyone. Well, she promptly told everyone. Um, <laughs> uh, so my son, who I did not want to take time off work, of course, took time off work. And he hopped in his car and uh, him, his wife, and my two grandsons, and they all came over. So I was in the hospital day one. They come walking in the room about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, he stuck around until Sunday, uh, which was five days. So he stayed for five days. He did a lot of work around the house. 
uh, while I was in the hospital. He organized my garage. He told me, he goes, your, your, your garage, you may not be able to find anything, but there are no trip hazards out there. And considering you're going to be on a lot of new meds, uh, and one of them being blood thinners, I don't want you to be falling down. So let's, uh, let's rectify that one. So did that. His wife cleaned the inside of our house, organized our pantry. Just, I mean, they just did everything. I mean, he looked around for anything that wasn't just jam up and jelly tight. My front doorknob, we don't use the front door a lot. He uh, took the front door apart and cleaned everything and got everything working properly. Anything he could find, he just fixed. My daughter, my youngest daughter, uh, came by, uh, of course, her and her uh, husband and the grandbaby. They also uh, stuck around and did a lot around the house, encouraged Vicky, encouraged me. Um, and David, my uh, son-in-law, with uh, my other son-in-law, Mason, Baba's husband. Baba also worked very hard around the house. Uh, she came by, helped clean floors, clean dishes, the same thing my other daughter did. They just were constantly taking care of Vicky and taking care of me after I got home. But Mason and David, my son-in-laws, both of them came over on Wednesday and pulled all of the weeds in my flower bed. Just amazing, just amazing. Um, a good friend of mine, Dallas, he came by, he mowed my yard on Wednesday. And I'm like, man, everyone has been so kind. I also failed to mention, I want to thank my buddy Ken. He was, uh, he went up to the hospital several times. He took care of me, uh, brought me food, uh, bought me gifts, and just encouraged the heck out of me. Just prayed, prayed, prayed for me. So thank you, Ken, man. You are the man. So I'm going to tell you that investment I talk about in your friendships and in your family, don't take that lightly. That really is important. All of that investment in people pay just unbelievable dividends. Just wonderful. So I want to tell you that. I also wanted to give them a shout out because you know what? If you would just say thank you CB3's family, uh, I would appreciate it because they really, really heeded the call this week. Also with this channel, you know, it's been you know, a Saturday and a couple of Wednesdays, I didn't make a video, and and uh, the amount of emails and messages and phone calls that I've gotten, it's just been unbelievable, and I really, really am grateful. I appreciate it, and don't feel bad if I don't call you. I get so many calls. There are times I mute my phone and then go back and check the messages, because if I didn't, it would literally keep me up. <laughs> But don't think that you're a bother because you're not. So I wanted to encourage you with that about friends and family and those things because it really, really is important. Now, the next thing, and this is for this is the one I wanted to tell you guys that you really need to do. You know, I end every video with eat right, take care of yourself. You need to do that. You need to do that. With my family history, I basically was told by a cardiologist if I would not have taken care of myself, to the level and with the with the extent of care that I've given um, where I'm aware of what I'm doing and all of that that I probably would have been dead already just to let you know um, so you know it's it's one of those things my father's first cardiac event was in his 30s you know and my brother died at 49 of a massive heart attack my sister's in her mid-60s she's had two ablations and a heart catheterization and is on a, on meds and is getting ready to have a, another procedure done and it's just a family history and so we understand that that we have to take care of ourselves knowing that you know in the end we have to do our part so i beg of you for you to do your part in taking care of you you are important and you know you hear that and people go well take a little time you know slow down a little bit i'm going to tell you if you don't take care of you you're going to be slowed down now, something's going to slow you down and you may you won't have any say in it you're not going to be slowed down in a way that you want to so i'm begging you eat right take care of yourself really really do that you know i, I just I can't overemphasize how important that is. You know, Coach Vic, uh, she was calm through all this whole thing. I don't know how emotional she was or was not. 
you know, I mean, around me, she was just cool as a cucumber. She went out and got her hair done today. She was not real excited about me going out for a ride today. I understand that. I love you, Vic. <laughs> My doctors have basically said zero two-wheelers for a while, so that's where it is on that. They're not happy that I'm doing this, just to be quite honest with you, but I said, you know, I'm not going to sit around. I'm not that I'm not going to do. I'm going to live my life. So they're like, just be careful. Be careful. You know the risk. You know, you know the dangers you're putting yourself in. You just be careful. So I do know, and I am being careful, and there you have it. Boy, talk about getting off the beaten path there. <laughs> but Coach Vic, man, Coach Vic was cool, calm, and collected. She's done what she's needed to do, and, and anyone who's been a part of this channel for a while understands that Coach Vic is not a morning person. And I have to take meds now. That's another weird thing. And so uh, I need to eat breakfast. Well, I, I can make my own breakfast, but she's gotten up every morning and made breakfast for me. And she's like, Bob, I need to do that. That's a good thing for me to do for you. And it's just a good thing for me to do all around. It's good for me to get up to. So um, I'm grateful for that. So Coach Vic, man, she's been a trooper through this whole thing. And it's been really cool. So let's talk about what is actually going on. All right. Well, Saturday a week ago, I uh, had some good food and good times, and it was a great day. And that night I went to bed, and I felt weird. And uh, my watch made a weird sound. I didn't pay much attention to it. I took it off. I put it on the charger. Didn't worry about it. And it was on the charger most of the next day, and I got it and put it on the next day, and it made a weird sound again. I'm like, what is that? I don't know. I'm busy. So Monday night, about 10 o'clock, my watch made that sound again. I look at my watch, and it goes, uh, the rhythm of your heart shows that you are an AFib. If you've not been diagnosed with AFib, you need to seek medical attention, that sort of thing. And, and I'm like, I, I, you know what? I'm going to give it a chance to uh, calm down. I'm going to go to bed, and we're going to see what's going on. Uh, two o'clock in the morning I was feeling really really bad uh, my watch sent another notification saying that I was an AFib and coach Vic took me to the hospital so I want to tell you that if you don't have an Apple Expedition watch and you have a heart condition you need to get one they're, they're not inexpensive I'm gonna tell you that they are expensive watches they're like seven eight hundred bucks this watch saved my life y'all it did it, 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 it's well worth the investment it not only does that, it, it measures your heart rate variability. I'm going to show you a scale, a graph right here. Here's my heart rate variability. Um, what it normally does versus what it did over that, you know, four or five day period. Understand these watches, they will do a lot. I talked to my cardiologist today, as a matter of fact, and they are like, we are a big advocate of this watch. Um, this watch has saved thousands of lives as far as we're concerned, and we strongly encourage you to always wear it. Um, it is not 100% because you're going to take it off to charge it. You're going to take it off in the shower. But the watch itself, when you're wearing it, if you will use it, it is a valuable tool. Um, the watch will call. It, it has fall detection on it. It will call 911. It has a medication list. It has all of these things available on it. And none of this stuff costs extra money. It's just it's designed into the watch. So my Apple Expedition watch, I'll show you a picture of it like right here and what it costs. And if you can afford one at all, I'm telling you, it's a lifesaver. To me, <laughs> it's priceless um, because it's quite possible that Coach Bob would not be making this video if it weren't for this Apple Watch. Just being quite honest with you. Not being overly dramatic. All right, so what does this mean long term? That's the question I think that I have, and I'm sure you have as well. Not only in my health, in my life, but what does it mean for the channel? You know, all of those things matter to me. I often say you're like family to me. I'm not kidding. You know, I miss this. I missed it. And so what does it mean for the channel? Well, 
Right now what it means is that I can't be out in extreme heat for prolonged periods of time. Well, <laughs> that's not a real good thing for a swim coach. So what does that mean for swim? I guess time will tell. I have a procedure that I'm going to have done next month uh, in June, early June. Um, we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'm going to have to be on a cocktail of medications. That does not turn me on at all. Anyone who knows me knows that I've, I don't take anything. I've never taken, I, I've never taken anything. I mean, nothing. So I, I never have. Now, all of a sudden, you know, I'm taking six pills a day. Am I going to have to take them forever? Right now, the answer is yes. Um, will I have to? I guess only time will tell. Um, but if it means that I cannot live a life if I don't take them, then I'm going to take them. You know, I don't, I don't want to, I'll be quite frank with you. Um, but I, I'm willing. And I'm in my first week of them, so I understand that I'm in my first week and, and that they make you feel a little weird at times. That's part of it. Prolonged heat. Well, you know, I, I wanted to go to the Hot Springs Spider Rally. I want to go to the Deadwood Three Wheel Rally. Am I going to be able to go? Hot Springs Spider Rally. I'm going to tell you, last time I was there, it was hot. It was real hot. Um, and the Deadwood Three Wheel Rally is through the heartland to get there in July. So, what does that mean? Well, you know, it means I may be putting the spider up on a trailer and hauling it out there and then riding it once I get there. That's what it's probably going to mean. It's not ideal. It's not ideal. You know, I want to put in 600 miles in 110 degree heat. You guys know me. That's what I want to do. That's what I feel like I could. That's the crazy thing right now. If you were to ask me how you feel, man, I could put on my running shoes and go run 10 miles. But that, I know that's not the reality that I'm living in right now. So how long are these limitations going to plague me? Well, the doctors, they're, they're pretty optimistic. You know, they're like, if you stay cool and hydrated and when you start feeling weird, you just gotta pull the plug, you know, you'll be fine. Um, but if you, as you guys know, you could be five hours from your destination, it can be hot as heck and there's nowhere to stay. There's no uh, safe haven from the heat. Um, I have to be careful with that. This is, I mean, to me, this is ridiculous stuff, but it is what I'm faced with right now. So that's where that is. Does it mean that I can't do bike week or the land spider rally or those things that are four hours from the house? Obviously I can do those. I, I can leave early enough in the morning. I can seek shelter in the hottest part of the day. That sort of stuff, you know, I can, I can mitigate this for 99% of my riding. It's just the big trips. That's the one that's going to be the problem. And I have a workaround. So, you know, with the, with the trailer, I'll pull it if I got to. If I don't, I don't. We'll figure all that out, though, as time goes by. So, I did have a question. I had two questions from a good friend of mine, and I'm going to share those, and then I'm going to wrap this up. I know this video is going a little bit long, but that's okay. But before I answer these last two questions, I want you to give, give this video a big old fat thumbs up. Share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, all that stuff. All right, enough of that. Okay, the first thing he asked me is this. Bob, are you pissed off? You've done everything right. And, you know, you've taken care of yourself. You've eaten right. You, you know, you're almost 62 and you have abs. You, you, you look like you're 20 without your shirt on. Are you mad? Because I sure would be. And my answer to him was this. No, I'm not. Because I understand had I not done that, that things would be a lot worse. The reason they're doing all of these things that they want, that they can do to me quickly, is because they don't want me to lose my fitness level. They want me to return to a normal life. And so they're doing all of these things to me to make my life normal as rapidly as possible so that I can return to getting out in the heat and running and swimming and, and God willing, I'll be able to do it. So am I mad about this knowing that I've taken care of myself? Am I angry? No, I'm not. So that was the first one. And the second one, were you scared? That's the big one, right? Were you scared? 
You know, I would say that on a scale of 1 to 10, because I think to say that I wasn't scared at all would be a lie, and to say that I was terrified would also be a lie. So let's go on a scale of 1 to 10 was I scared. 1 being not scared at all, and a 10 being absolutely paralyzed with fear. I would say I was a 2, maybe a 2.5, maybe. Maybe. Um, obviously, I don't want to die. I want to hold my grandchildren. I want to see my grandchildren graduate from high school. I want to see all that. I want to see the, the, the good things in life. I want to, I'd want i like to see my son retire, for crying out loud. I understand that these things are not guaranteed, but those are the things that I want. So, understanding that, you know, uh, you know I've said many times on this channel, that if I know that the days of my life are numbered like the hairs on my head, then I have to trust the one who numbers them. And I do. I really do. Um, you know, we have a time stamp on this life, if you didn't know that. You know, <laughs> best if served by. <laughs> but we do. We have a time stamp on this life. And that time stamp, once expired, it expires. And so I understand that. And not wanting to die and worrying about my children and my family, I would feel fear start to kind of creep up inside of me. And then I would see my son step up. And then the effervescent Coach Vic would say, Bob, he's turning into you. He's trying to be you. And he's going to be me. He's going to be better than me. And that's cool. And so seeing my family pull together, I will tell you guys, if something would have happened to me, uh, love on Coach Vic and encourage my family through messages, but also understand this, they're going to be okay because they pull together. And I was very, very proud of them for doing that. I've never been the recipient of a lot of help. I've never been the guy that, you know, did a GoFundMe or, or said, would you mow my grass for me or would you cut this tree limb for me or whatever. I've never been that guy. For my family, my son-in-laws, man, they don't even have my blood running through their veins. And they're over at my house in 95 degree heat index pulling weeds, digging out roots. Man, my daughter's mopping floors, cleaning the kitchen. My daughter-in-law organizing for Vicky, cleaning things. My son just basically coming in like a freaking Category 5 hurricane and just tearing through everything and accomplishing all that needed to be done. I couldn't be more proud. And once I saw that, I will tell you that my fear, for the most part, was gone. Now, when they pull me back for a procedure and they go, hey, we're going we're gonna to stop your heart for a split second here. You know, that's, that's kind of disconcerting, you know. Uh, that thing's supposed to not stop. But they had to reset the old clock, so they did what they needed to do, and everything's good for the moment, and we're just going to go with that. <laughs> so, there it is. Coach Bob had a cardiac event. It wasn't clickbait. All right. Be encouraged, my friends. Take care of yourself. I'm telling you, do not just take what I'm about to say lightly because I really, really mean it. So you, yes, you go out by the motorcycle of your dreams. Eat right. Take care of yourself. And remember, if you're not having fun, especially in the hard times, then you are doing it wrong. Now, you go seize the day, and I guarantee you, I'm going to see you on the road real, real soon. All right.